Greetings, masters. Have you been leveling up your servants only to find that you don't have enough materials? Stumped, you exclaim, What? Where do you even find Scarabs of Wisdom? Ugh. Well, sit back, strap in, and get ready as we go over all of the current best nodes to farm materials. This will cover all nodes up through Camelot, including the materials needed for the summer event and where they drop once that event takes place. This list will cover only the best AP per drop nodes, as well as alternatives if you are not the most maxed out leveled master. So let's start with Proof of Heroes. The pirate ship in Okeanos will net you the best bang for your buck at 20.2 AP per hero proof. This node comes with a mix of archers and sabers ranging from level 28 to 38. This should be easy to clear for most masters. Evil Bones. We are headed to Fiyuki XC. This node will provide you with an evil bone per 21.5 AP. While theoretically XG is a much better drop rate percentage at 64.3%, it also costs 15 AP and has an estimated AP drop of 23 3 AP. The upside to doing XG is that you can burn through your AP faster and not have to run through 4 AP quests over and over and over again. While XC is the better pound for pound node for ease and time, I would suggest XG. XC is a mix of level 1 to 6 sabers and lancers, which should be doable by any master starting out in their sleep. XG will be a bit tougher. You will have a mix of sabers, lancers, and a lone archer ranging from level 40 to 48. Dragon's Fangs. For Dragon's Fangs, we are headed to the good old US of A. Deming to be exact. With a 27.2 AP cost per fang, this just squeaks out the Isle of Wyverns and Okeanos at 27.8. Deming is going to be a bit harder with the enemies all being level 55 riders. If you are a new master, hit the Island of Wyverns as it is just as good, and you are looking at rider enemies ranging from level 24 through 40. Void Dust. Well, we're back in America, Charlotte this time, and this is going to be by far the absolute best place for Void Dust for the remainder of the game, unless they come out with something new in JP. 31 AP per dust blows the second place node out of the water, and that one is in Camelot. You do have an alternative in Septum for lower level masters, and that is Massilia. Charlotte is going to be a mixed bag of enemies with archers, lancers, casters, and berserkers. The enemies are going to run from level 55 to 70, so make sure you are ready for this one. For Massilia, you are going to be looking at about 46.3 AP per drop, but this is by far and away easier. You will have sabers and lancers with a rider and a berserker boss. They will range from level 12 to 28, so this should be fairly easy for the newer master to clear. Chains of Fools. So this one's going to be for those of you who are currently skilling up and ascending Camelot servants. As such, it would be assumed that you can handle what is thrown at you. Well, there is only one real place to farm if you are farming chains, and that is the Wastelands of Death. At 30 AP per chain, you are going to be spending a lot of time here, so get comfortable. You are going to have a mix of assassins and berserkers here, with the last two berserkers being fairly beefy. This won't likely be an easy three-turn node. So, the enemies do range from level 45 to 59, with the top boss clocking in at 93,000 hit points. Now that we're getting into the tier 2 mats, this is where it's going to be a little bit more of a pain. You are going to be spending more AP per drop, and... Well, welcome to Grind Hell. Let's start out with Seeds. Back to Okeanos, and this time we are going to be in the Bountiful Sea with a 58.4 AP per drop cost. This is going to be one of the best places for a while. You will have a mix of Sabres, Lancers, and Archers, and this is going to be a bit more of an intermediate area with the enemies ranging from 36 to 50. The last two enemies will have 75 and 80,000 HP, respectively. Ghost Lanterns. Currently, Camelot's Mausoleum of the Evening Bell sits at the number one spot with 57.8 AP per drop, this one will be a little bit tough, so you do have the Stormy Seas of Okeanos as an alternative at 67.4 AP. 
The mausoleum will come packed with assassins, so ready up your casters, as their levels will range from 39 to 47. And while that might not sound bad, the last wave is two enemies with 60,000 hit points and one with 115,000 hit points. So be ready. Alternatively, the Stormy Sea will also be full of assassins, but the levels will range from 26 to 40. Octuplet Crystals. So Camelot, again, is going to be the absolute best place for this. The Holy City, 73.7 AP per drop, blows the second place spot. The two current C and Okeanos out by a landslide. 126.4 AP per drop, and trust me, I have farmed this. It's not fun. So Holy City is going to come with Berserkers, Lancers, and Sabers. The first two waves should be pretty easy, but the third is going to be a 236,000 hit point Spriggan Saber, which, if you are not ready, will bring some pain. The nice thing about this is that you can also farm skill gems as well as spirit roots at the same time. For the two currency, you are going to have Berserkers and Archers ranging from level 40 to 44 with a 55,000 HP Berserker boss. Serpent Jewels. This one is a pain and you will be spending some time at the Sunken Rock Seas because this is a 106.9 AP per drop. Now, you can also get these to drop during the caster training grounds on Fridays, but Okeanos is going to be your best bet. This is going to be full of archers and casters ranging from level 34 to 50, with the last wave having two enemies with 56k and a boss with 70k hit points. Phoenix Feathers. This one sucks as well. The best option is the 30 AP Saber Daily Training Grounds that are out on Sundays. AP per drop is 172.9 per drop, which is terrible. A suggestion in the future is, if you are able to farm these during an event at a high drop rate, you should spend some time as you need a lot of these, and well, it's rough. Now, if it is one of the other six days of the week, you can farm these at the Bountiful Sea, but it is a 192.8 AP per drop. One of the nice things is that while you are farming these, you can also be farming seeds as well. The next handful are not as bad. Eternal Gears, if you have made it up to the Americas, you can hit Chicago for a 51.4 AP per gear, which is not too bad at all. Clerkenwell in London is also available if you are unable to clear Chicago and you get one gear per 68.1 AP. When it comes to Chicago, you are going to be facing a whole stage of archers, and they are going to range from 50 to 80. First wave is pretty easy, second wave is going to be three enemies with 65k HP, and then the boss will be coming in at 220,000 HP, so be ready for this one. For Clarkenwell, it will be a bit easier, but still a tad tough for those newer masters, a mix of sabers and assassins with a third wave having two 63,000 hit point enemies, a boss with 111,000 hit points. Forbidden Pages. If you have any caster servants, you are going to know the pain of just how many pages you need to level and skill them. Hyde Park in London is going to be pretty much your best and really only spot at 72.5 ap per page this isn't too bad hyde park is going to be a mix of lancers and casters the second and third wave are going to be a tad hard for the newer masters as the second wave comes with a 90,000 hit point enemy and the third wave is two 90,000 hit point enemies and a 108k boss but get ready to spend some time here if you are trying to skill up those casters Homunculus Babies. Coming in at the number one spot for these babies, you have Southwark in London. At 62.5 AP per drop, you are almost twice as likely to get them as the next best location, which has 123.1. This node is going to feature Lancers as well as Archers, with the third wave having two 80k HP Lancers. Meteoric Horseshoes. Camelot is going to be the only real viable option here. At 50.1 AP per horseshoe, this is very, very good. 
considering that you can also get these in Okeanos, but the drop rate is 131.5 AP per horseshoe, and this is just a bad time. Land of the Void is going to have archers, riders, and an assassin mob. This will have two 72k enemies and one 124k boss in the last wave, so please be prepared for this. Medal of Great Knights. The only option here is going to be in Camelot. The Royal Castle is going to be the place to go at 56.9 AP per drop. This is going to be the best bang for your buck, and if you have archers, well, good, because this is full of sabers. However, the enemies here are going to be a bit rough, as the first two waves are going to have 72k and 76k enemies, capping it off with a 204k Shadow Gawain. Seashells of Reminiscence. Be aware that this will not be available until after the summer event, but once that drops, the Hidden Island will be available in Okeanos. It is going to be the place to go at 57.2 AP per drop, and that's not too bad. You will be up against a stage of sabers, and while all of the enemies are very low HP, you will have a 131k boss enemy on the last wave. Cause of Chaos, now that we are into the golden materials, these are going to be a little bit rougher. Des Moines America is going to be your only viable option with 87.7 AP. This stage is going to have assassins in your first stage, a single berserker and a single lancer in the second and third stage, and they are going to be very high hit points. Additional drops of notes in this node are seeds as well as void dust as the last boss is a shadow version of Li Xuan. Hearts of the Foreign God, your only option here outside of events are the 30 and 40 AP caster training grounds on Friday. This is why farming hearts during events is very, very important, and I always say, never enough hearts. Dragon's Reverse Scale, much like the hearts, you can only get these out of the 30 and 40 AP rider training grounds. Spirit Roots, Camelot Holy City that we mentioned earlier is going to be your best option at 161.9 AP per drop. Unfortunately, that is not very good, but you can farm these while you are farming other materials. Warhorse Horns, with Camelot coming out, we did get a better spot, and this is going to be the East Village. We are going from a 141.9 AP back in America to 109.6 AP per horn in Camelot. East Village is going to be full of riders with a single 196k bicorn during the last wave. The nice thing about this is you can also farm dragon's fangs while farming for horns as the first two waves are full of wyverns. Tear Stones of Blood, this is going to stay the same. Alexandria in America is going to remain the best place at 155.6 AP per drop. Sabres, Lancers, and a 150k Archer boss is what awaits you here. Black Beast Grease, much like Tear Stones, this is going to stay in America. Lubbock is going to remain the best spot at 146.7 AP per drop. And you are going to be going up against Sabres, Archers, and an Assassin boss with 198,000 hit points. Lamp of Demon Ceiling, the new Lamp of Demon Ceiling is going to have a 120 AP drop rate from the Hidden Village, which is a two-wave node with a 300k caster boss. The nice thing is, during the first wave, you have chances to get chains. Now, granted, they are very low, but if you are farming lamps, then you also have a chance at chains. Scarab of Wisdom. Last but not least is the Scarab of Wisdom. As expected, we are looking at Camelot, and you are going to be spending some serious amounts of time at the Great Temple. 210.4 AP per drop is pretty gross, and hands down the worst one on this list. The one thing that redeems this farm spot is that chains drop at a rate of 51.3 AP. So if you are not in a rush for chains, farming this to split between the two at a 21.3 AP loss on chains 
but a chance for scarabs wouldn't be a terrible idea. You will be up against two caster bosses on your last wave. They will be around 183 and 197,000 hit points, so be ready. Additionally, this is going to be one of the better places in the game to farm bond points with only currently the Royal Castle outpacing it, but this is a guide about ascension materials, not bond points. And I hope that this has helped you out on your upcoming grind for those skills and those ascensions. As always, I would like to thank all of the Patreons that help make this channel possible. You guys are the real rare drop. If you would like to join them, you can hit that link down in the description, but you can also help out the channel by hitting that subscribe button, hitting that bell notification, dropping me a comment and a like, and I will catch you next time. Take it easy. Peace. Just run away with my